Hi, this is Vanessa and Tim, and here are some of the latest ASEAN news for you. Tibor Port will contribute Timor Leste's accession to ASEAN. Timor Leste's President Jose Ramos Orto said Timor Leste's Tibor Port highly contributed to Timor Leste's economy and can help Timor Leste's joining into ASEAN. The head of state also asked the government to create law that can control the land border of Motain between Timor Leste and Indonesia so it will not create any negative impact on the investment of Timor Port. It is a good contribution to Timor Leste's economy, as well as the contribution to Timor Leste's accession to ASEAN. As well as fulfilling the ASEAN's requirement, Tibor Port is one of the greatest infrastructure so far in terms of cost. I have no idea Tibor Port is cost more or the electrification. As to establish this type of harbor, there should be a modern power system. I received reports in regards to its functioning, and we can see concrete data that positive to Timor Leste's economic interest. The government should pay attention about the Motain land border for both issues can synchronize. Therefore, it won't create any negative impact to our internal commerce. This is the duty of the government on how to establish a control law system that will not create negative impact to the huge investment of Tivar Port. Impacto negativo by investment of Port que Porto Tivar. The head of state also expressed his concern and asked the Timor Leste's government to pay attention to the shipping and cargo trucks that accommodated the roads without paying tax to the state. There are laws and rules that protected our economy, and we need to take care of this, securing our economy. The shipping trucks, the trailers that passing through the roads without paying taxes and overloading the road. The development of these roads are not merely built to handle the weight without any tax compensation. This for sure won't benefit the state. We have our own port, and its roads should have not used by the trucks that comes from the Atapupu Motain land border. As our accession to ASEAN will be free to all countries, the government needs to put more attention in order to protect our economy. Protect the infrastructure means the cargo and the shipping trucks should pay taxes that equal to the weight of tons that cost, and this is a normal thing. Tibor Port started its operation on 2020 and currently controlled by the Bolore Company, China Harbor Company and Timor Leste's Custom Authority. Thailand's Prime Minister announced will inject 560 billion baht to revive Thai's economy. Thailand's Prime Minister Shreta Tavisin announced a cash handout worth 560 billion baht in a bid to revive the Thai economy while unveiling a set of cabinet policies to the parliament. The Prime Minister said, apart from distributing 10,000 baht or $282 to every citizen through a digital wallet, Shreta's government will also defer debt payments, reducing energy prices and make constitutional amendments. <laughs> The policy of adding 10,000 Thai baht through a digital wallet is aimed to stimulating the economy in Thailand once again. We will inject money into the economy comprehensively and distribute it to every region, reaching the grassroots level to promote spending, elevate the quality of life and create job opportunities for the people. In order for the Thai people to have a more democratic constitution while adhering to the constitutional monarchy model with the king, as well as the symbol and not subject to amendments in the category of the monarchy, the government will engage in discussions to emphasize the importance of involving citizens from all regions in designing a modern and mutually acceptable democratic constitution. However, Member of Parliament Sirikanya Tansakul from the opposition move forward party raised stops regarding the source of the funds. Apart from being a policy statement that lacks both goals and details, it also avoids addressing policies that had been mentioned during the election campaign. Furthermore, it is a statement lacking the boldness to lead the society forward and the ambition to bring about structural changes in the country. Indonesia president takes ride on Jakarta Bandung High Speed Railway. Indonesian President Joko Widodo took a ride on the Jakarta Bandung High Speed Railway, a landmark project under the China Proposed Belt and Road Initiative.
Widow examined the construction progress at Halim Station in the capital, Jakarta, and took the train to the Padalarang Station in West Java province. The Indonesian president described the ride experience as smooth and comfortable. He hoped that the Indonesian people will use public transportation more frequently so as to ease the traffic pressure between Jakarta and Bandung. I've made four inspections to this project and this is my first time to take a ride. It's comfortable. Even when speed reached 350 km per hour, I didn't feel bumpy, either standing or sitting. This is an advancement of civilization. The Jakarta Bandung High Speed Railway connects Indonesia's capital Jakarta and West Java's province capital Bandung with a design speed of 350 km per hour. The railway spanning 142.3 km will cut the journey between the two cities from over 3 hours to around 40 minutes. It is the first overseas high speed railway project that fully uses Chinese railway systems, technology, and industrial components. Philippine Nobel laureate Reza acquitted in tax fraud case. Philippine Nobel laureate Maria Reza and her new site, Rappler, were acquitted of tax fraud by a trial in another legal victory for the embattled journalist for press freedom in the Southeast Asian country. The acquittal now um, strengthens our resolve to continue with the justice system, to submit ourselves to the court despite the political harassment, despite the attacks on press freedom. It shows that the court system works and uh, we hope to see the remaining charges dismissed. Yeah. Ressa, who won the Nobel Peace Prize in 2021 alongside a Russian journalist, is head of Rappler, which earned a reputation for its intense scrutiny of former president Rodrigo Duterte and his deadly war on drugs. I mean, we've gone through some of the darkest times. Um, we're not out of the woods yet. Uh, both journalism and democracy is under attack globally. The cameras that are here are threatened by information operations on social media, right? We've seen this not just in the Philippines, but all around the world. So social media has been used to water down facts, to change lies into facts. And now you have generative AI. So it's going to get harder as we move forward. Reza's acquittal was expected after she was cleared of similar tax chargers nine months ago. Vietnamese Prime Minister visit the apartment block where fire killed 56 people. Thủ tướng Phạm Minh Chính gửi lời thăm hỏi chia buồn sâu sắc tới Vietnam's Prime Minister Phan Minh Chin visited the apartment block in which are fire killed 56 people among them children and injured 37. Và thực hiện đầy đủ chính sách the fire broke out during the night at Hanoi 9-story building, home to about 150 residents, according to the official Vietnam news agency, VNA, which said the place was contained by 2 a.m. or 1900-hour GMT. Prime Minister Chin also visited a hospital where the injured were being treated, according to the government statement following the visit Chin called for the completion of anti-fire regulations at mall-sized apartments building in densely populated residential areas. Police have detained the owner of the building, Nghiem Quang Min, accusing him of violating fire prevention regulations. The Minister of Public Security said in a statement, adding that an investigation into the case is underway. Biden returns to Washington after G20 and Vietnam. United States President Joe Biden returned to Washington in early hours after his trips to India and Vietnam. As he disembarked from the presidential helicopter and entered the White House, he did not respond to a reporter's question about the reported meeting between North Korean leader Kim Jong-un and Russian President Vladimir Putin. Biden was returning from the G20 summit in India. He followed that up with a trip to Vietnam where he said that the U.S. was elevating relations to a comprehensive strategic partnership and deepening cooperation in cloud computing, semiconductors, and artificial intelligence. Thank you very much, everyone. Have a nice week ahead, and we will see you all soon.